Hi everybody, welcome into our YouTube channel here at Fantasy Pros. I am Lauren Carpenter, and today I am going to discuss 15 players that you should look to avoid drafting in 2021. First up, Jalen Hurts, quarterback for the Philadelphia Eagles. While Hurts was a solid addition to fantasy rosters off of the waiver wire last year due to his rushing ability, he didn't necessarily shine as a passer. With just 52% completion rate and a 6-4 to four touchdown to interception ratio, Hurts is going to have to be sensational as a mobile quarterback this season to justify the hype that he's getting. While he has the talent to be very good on the ground and pick up rushing yards, NFL defenses are now going to be able to game plan for Hertz's skill set with an entire offseason to study tape. If defenses can work to limit his mobility and force him to beat them from the pocket, we could see his fantasy output take a big hit. As a streaming quarterback, Hertz is worth taking a shot on to see if he can overcome these potential obstacles. However, there's the potential that we see his ADP get to the point where he's being drafted as a top 8 quarterback and that's simply too much risk. Matt Ryan, quarterback, Atlanta Falcons. Ryan did have some appeal earlier in this offseason, but with Julio Jones now out of town, you should stay away from Matt Ryan. With a wide receiving core that lacks proven depth, it's difficult to see Ryan finish as a top 12 QB in 2021. He might be able to provide you with a solid floor each week, but the path for upside simply isn't there. He's a fine QB2 for your super flex formats, but I'm willing to look elsewhere at the position in my single quarterback leagues. Saquon Barkley, running back, New York Giants. From a talent perspective, Saquon Barkley is the best running back in the NFL when he's on the field. Unfortunately, the issue has been staying on the field the past two seasons. Barkley has played 15 out of a possible 32 games, which makes him a very risky investment at the top of your draft. For fantasy managers to have a shot of competing deep into their playoffs, they need their top draft pick to pull their weight all season long. As the RB3 at ECR right now, that's too much draft capital to justify the risk, even being taken off the pup list. DeAndre Swift, running back, Detroit Lions. Based on pure talent, Swift already belongs in the top 12 running back conversation in the NFL. Unfortunately, it's hard to have faith that Swift will finish in that range this year for fantasy purposes. While he could see plenty of targets in the passing game, the scoring opportunities on this bad Detroit Lions team probably aren't going to be very plentiful. Additionally, he has to compete for touches with Jamal Williams and Anthony Lynn has been vocal about his love for utilizing a committee approach. Swift is going to be a safe RB2 for your roster this season because of the floor he'll bring you week in and week out. However, due to the offense he's in, there's virtually no upside. Unfortunately, his ADP may be way too high to pick him as your RB2. Michael Thomas, wide receiver, New Orleans Saints. There is a lot going against Michael Thomas this year. After missing a ton of time last year and breaking fantasy managers' hearts around the world, the news didn't get any better this offseason. He could miss up to six weeks in the regular season with yet another injury and offseason surgery, and we aren't even sure what is going to happen with him even when he is eligible to play again. He is vocal about wanting a trade and has even taken to Twitter to air some grievances. If and only if he falls so far in ADP that you can justify drafting him, you could stash him for the second half of the season. That being said, I would still avoid the drama that should inevitably unfold this season. Kenny Galladay, wide receiver, New York Giants. There's a lot of hype right now surrounding Kenny Galladay and it's easy to understand why that's the case. He's an incredibly talented receiver and he just signed a massive contract with the New York Giants in free agency this offseason. However, once you really assess the situation around him, it's difficult to get too excited. Galladay now joins an absolutely crowded offense with a lot of mouths to feed, which instantly puts a cap on his projected ceiling. With Saquon Barkley, Darius Slayton, Sterling Shepard, Darius Toney, Evan Ingram, Kyle Rudolph, and Devontae Booker all in the mix for targets, Galladay is going to have to be ultra efficient with his opportunity to make an impact for fantasy football. You're also buying into Daniel Jones taking a massive step forward if you trust Galladay as more than a wide receiver too. Oh, and let's not forget, Kenny Galladay is still dealing with a lingering injury which has been hampering him in training camp. Mike Evans, wide receiver, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 
What Evans has done throughout his career is no small feat. In his seven seasons in the NFL, Evans has never finished with less than 1,000 receiving yards in any given year. With that being said, he is a roller coaster to have on your fantasy football roster. Evans brings some massive upside based on his size, skill set, and his talent. However, fantasy managers need consistency from their wide receivers if they're being drafted at a premium price. With Chris Godwin expected to be healthy and Antonio Brown playing a full season, Evans' ADP is too high to take the risk on a boom or bust player. Speaking of a boom or bust player, let's look no further than Tyler Lockett, wide receiver for the Seattle Seahawks. While his 2020 stats look great, there's a greater context that doesn't come across when looking at the fact that he finished with over 1,000 receiving yards and 10 touchdowns last season. The majority of Lockett's production came in only three games last year, which is extremely concerning for fantasy managers that are playing in weekly redraft leagues. He comes with weak winning upside, yes, but there's the potential that he can hurt your fantasy lineup if he doesn't come through with a huge performance. This all comes down to Lockett's value and where you're able to get him in your drafts. If you're able to secure him as a wide receiver three on your roster, this is enough of a discount to where you can live with the potential range of outcomes. However, if you're needing to rely on him as a wide receiver two or a consistent producer to keep your lineup in matchups, this is a strategy that can lead to a lot of heartache. We know what Lockett can be for fantasy, that's not the question. So he's still worth selecting in your drafts this year, but only at the right ADP. TJ Hawkinson, tight end, Detroit Lions. The expectations for Hawkinson right now are sky high, and it's hard to see how he returns the value. The scoring opportunities are going to be essentially non-existent for this team, and we could see them at the bottom of the league in overall plays. Hawkinson can soak up targets this season, but if he doesn't score plenty of touchdowns, he's going to disappoint fantasy managers that drafted him as a top five tight end. He's being drafted at his absolute ceiling right now, and that does not guarantee ceiling type numbers. Joe Mixon, running back, Cincinnati Bengals. The Mixon love is getting out of hand. Sure, he's slated to be the Bengals' workhorse back again in 2021, but this is the same guy that has played 16 games in a season just once in his career and averaged 3.6 yards per carry in just six games last year. Don't count on him being a heavy factor in the passing game either. Mixon is being drafted as close to his maximum value as any guy in the RB1 conversation. You should look elsewhere. Derek Carr, quarterback, Las Vegas Raiders. Carr was one of the least pressured starting quarterbacks in football last season and used that extra time to his advantage, putting up more than 4,100 passing yards with 27 touchdowns and just nine interceptions. But with the Raiders bidding farewell to three starters on the offensive line, the chances that Las Vegas duplicating its pressure success from 2020 are low. Carr provided great value as a largely undrafted quarterback last year, but don't expect a repeat. Possible streaming options, sure, but I would avoid Derek Carr as well. T. Higgins, wide receiver, Cincinnati Bengals. Nothing against Higgins' talent level or against the Cincinnati Bengals. He has plenty of talent, as evidenced by his 908 receiving yards and six touchdowns as a rookie, but the addition of Jamar Chase, who already has great rapport with their starting quarterback in Joe Burrow, it throws an entire Cincinnati passing game into flux. Higgins might very well be the best of the bunch, but as the guy with the highest ADP between himself, Jamar Chase, and Tyler Boyd, that's a risk you'd be better off avoiding altogether. Will Fuller, wide receiver, Miami Dolphins. Whoever winds up with Fuller will be adding a terrific wide receiver, yes, for about 10 games or so. Fuller has missed a whopping 25 games over the past four seasons due to a litany of injuries, severely hampering his upside and dropping him down the majority of draft boards. Fuller's talent can't be questioned, but if you're hoping to land a player who will actually be in your lineup for those critical playoff matchups, this isn't the guy for you. Plus, don't forget, he is an extreme boom or bust player. Miles Sanders, running back, Philadelphia Eagles. Sanders is the most talented runner on the Eagles. The problem is he has plenty of company. Not only is he joined in the backfield by Kerryon Johnson, Boston Scott, and Kenneth Gainwell, he'll have to contend with starting quarterback Jalen Hurts and who knows, maybe even Deshaun Watson if these rumors are to be believed, who will see plenty of carries himself. 
Sanders also dealt with three different injuries in 2020, calling into question his ability to be an every down starter. Don't expect that to be the case this season. David Johnson, running back on the Houston Texans. <laughs> Managers are avoiding the Houston Texans like the plague this offseason, and I don't blame them one bit. Their quarterback situation is far from settled, their receiving core has plenty of question marks and holes, and the backfield, it's a hot mess. David Johnson is the best of a very uninspiring lot and will likely see a cap on his work in order to keep him healthy. Houston is going to trail a lot this season, and that's bad news for David Johnson's fantasy value. And there you have it. These are 15 players that you should avoid drafting in 2021. Thank you so much for tuning into our YouTube channel, and thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure you are following us at Fantasy Pros on Instagram, on Twitter, and on Facebook so that you don't miss out on any of the content just like this that we're going to be putting out all year long.